members, it's Alexis Selworth here. Um, I have a word from the Lord that I feel like is really going to bless you today, so I'm really excited to share it with you. But before we get started, let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you so much for your word. Thank you so much for um, our ability to be able to read it, and thank you for providing um, the word in so many different languages, God. We just pray that you would continue to work in our hearts and our lives and to um, touch our hearts so that we could um, glorify you in this body, O oh Lord. It's in your holy and awesome name. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. So this message um, is called The Importance of Your Offering. And um, it starts out in Matthew 14, 16 through 18. And this is the story of the five loaves and the two fish. It says this, But Jesus said, They need not go away. You give them something to eat. They said to him, We only have here five loaves and two fish. And he said, Bring them here to me. And so what Jesus does is in that moment, you know, these people have been listening to him, you know, and they're hungry. So what the disciples say is they say, hey, you know, you need to send them away. They need to be able to go ahead and get some food. And Jesus says, no, you feed them. And so they're like, Jesus, you know, we only have five loaves and we only have two fish. This is what we have. And this is, you know, this little boy's lunch. It's not enough to feed even us. But what Jesus does in that moment is he does a miracle. He takes the five loaves and the two fish and he blesses it and he breaks it and he multiplies it. And so what Jesus does in our lives is he blesses it, he breaks it, and he multiplies it when we put that offering of our lives right into his hands. And so in our lives we have this decision, we have a decision to either, you know, do what Christ has called us to do or we have a decision to do what we want to do in our lives and our lives you know they're they're lived best they're fulfilled when we're doing what the lord has called us to do the fact is that god has a purpose for our lives he has a purpose for you and i and we have the option to either you know offer our lives up as a living sacrifice you know like it says in romans 12 1 or we can live in the flesh and do what we desire to do with our lives but we see that jesus in the offering he does something beautiful the offering of our time our resources our talent our lives you know he can do awesome and mighty things when you know we give it to him and um, so in the hands of Jesus he multiplies the little we have and provides exactly what people need the next um, example of the offering that we see is the widow's offering it's in Luke 21 1 through 4 Jesus looked up and he saw the rich putting their gifts into the offering box and he saw the poor widow put in two small copper coins and he said truly I tell you this this poor widow has put in more than all of them for they all contributed out of their abundance but she out of the poverty put in all she had to live on and this just it blesses me whenever I see it you know I see that she was willing to give it all because she had faith in the Lord Jesus Christ that he was going to take care of her. You know, if God gave it, then she could give it back to him because he's a faithful God and she trusted him. I think sometimes in our lives, you know, we look um, so much at other people and we compare, you know, we think, uh, you know, they have more gifts or they have more talents or they have more resources and they're doing bigger and better things for the Lord. But that's not what God, you know, wants us to see. He wants us to see one, they're being obedient, and two, I'm using them. And that's what we need to see in our lives, that when we decide to do what God has called us to do, that he's going to use it and multiply it and bless people. Your offering is important. The offering that you give to God, the offering of your life is important. And I urge you, you know, not to be afraid and not to think that, you know, your offering isn't good enough. Um, and that leads us to the next um, offering, the parable of the talents. In Matthew 25, 14 through 30, it says this, For it will be like him, a man on his journey, who called his servants and entrusted them to his property. To the one he gave five, to the other he gave two, and to the other one, to each according to his own ability. So right here we see that God gives each according to his own ability. He gives us what we can do because God sees us not only for, 
you know, what we see ourselves as. He sees the weaknesses, he sees the flaws, he sees all that, right? But he also sees our potential, our God-given potential. And that's what we don't see, you know? I had this dream one time and um, it was a beautiful, um, it was a beautiful garden. And so in the garden, um, I was in the center and there was this lady that I knew at church and she was just showing me her garden. And I was like, wow, this is so beautiful. And so she says, no, this is not beautiful. So she stretches her hand, she goes across, and then what I see is the flower in the most vibrant of colors, all these beautiful flowers, all different. But what they, the, the fact is that, you know, we only see our flaws and, you know, we see our weaknesses and we see, you know, our not enough, but God sees us for our potential. And so in that dream, it was just God showing me that we, we don't see the potential. We see just a small portion. And so when we give our lives to God, we're able to see the huge portion. We're able to begin to see what our potential is, our God-given purpose. And so here in this parable, you know, the talents represent the resources that God gives us. Their um, time you know, their resources, their um, money, gifts, you know, spiritual gifts, all these things that God gives us, these are our resources. And the fact is that he gives us, you know, according to what we're able. But here we see that, you know, there was one and he, you know, invested and he made five more. There was another one. He invested the two talents and he made two more. And then there was another one that had the one talent and um, he dug it in the ground and he hid it. And I think that sometimes we're fearful. We're fearful because we feel like we're not good enough. We're not um, talented enough. We don't have enough money or enough resources. We can't do big things for the Lord. That's how we feel. But the devil likes to tell us that to keep us from doing what God has called us to do. It's time for us to stand up and say, this is what God has given me. This is my gift, this is my talent, and I am going to use it for his glory. We have to stop thinking in our minds that we're not enough, we're not good enough, we're not smart enough, we're not talented enough, we don't have enough money, we can't do these things. Yes, you can. The Bible says I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength, all things. Whatever Jesus Christ has called you to do, you can do in his strength and in his power. And that is what we have to remember. We have to stop telling ourselves, I can't. I can't do this. I can't do what Christ has called me to do. I can't. I'm not this. I'm not that. Stop. Stop telling yourself that. Don't be like this man who dug his talent in the sand. You know, that talent, whatever talent it is, that one thing, that's so important to God. You are important to God. And whatever he's put inside you, your heart's desires as you're trying to live out your Christian life and to glorify God, it is so important. Do not let the devil tell you that it's not important. Do not let the devil tell you that, you know, you can't be used by God. You can be used by God. All throughout the Bible, there's a picture of what? Flawed people. Sinners that love the Lord and are trying to do what he has called them to do. And what happens is when they are, you know, focusing on the Lord and having faith in them and faith in the Lord, then what happens? God, you know, he does great things. There's miracles that are done. There's lives that are changed. There's hearts that are changed. There's salvation that's happened. There's baptism. There's revival. What happens if the Christians, if the people of God do what God has called them? them to do change change revival you know encouragement strength in the lord you know jesus christ being glorified in our bodies and our flesh right that comes from us saying i'm going to be obedient i'm going to do what christ has called me to do i am going to give him my offering i'm going to give him my life and i'm going to allow him to use everything that i have for his glory you know, and we have that choice. We have that choice to say, I'm going to walk in the flesh or I'm going to walk in the spirit. We have the choice to say, I'm going to live my life for me or I'm going to live it for, you know, the Lord. And the fact is that his desire is for us to live it for him. So we have these resources and these gifts and these talents 
and we are responsible for whatever God gives us. We are called and we are accountable to God for what we do with the time, with this life, with our days, with our words, with our talents, our spiritual gifts, with you know our families, we are responsible and we have to get that in our heads and in our minds. I'm responsible. I'm responsible for what Christ has called me to do and I need to believe, believe what the Lord has said and that he will be with me and he will strengthen me. When we are weak, he is strong and we need to know that in our inmost being, you know, that these flaws, God saw them. God knew that sometimes you would be afraid. God knew that Moses, you know, that he had a speech impediment, you know. He knew that he couldn't speak well. But did God still call him? Yes. Yes, God still called Moses. He knew everything about him. He knew the beginning. He knew that he had murdered a man. He knew it. You know, and Paul, he knew that he had murdered and done all these things against God. And guess what he said? I'm calling him. I'm calling him. And when he submits, when he is obedient, I will use him. And that's what he does in our lives. He has the ability to take the brokenness and the weaknesses and, you know, to bring that out and to use it for the glory of God. And we have that choice to be obedient, to offer our lives as a living sacrifice, to glorify him in our flesh and decide that I want to walk in the spirit. I want to do what Christ has called me to do. I want to have faith. I want to step out. I want to believe and I'm going to do the things that Christ has called me to do. That is what the Lord desires of you and I, for us to do what he has called us to do. You know, our offering is important to the Lord. Our offering is something that he can take and use for his glory and use to just do miracles and to, you know, bring to people what they need, you know, being that source of encouragement to others that he has called us to be. Um, so Romans 12, 1 says, I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. And so today, I just want to encourage you this. I want to say, don't be afraid to step out in faith and do what the Lord has called you to do. Know that the offering, your offering, your life, your resources, your days, your gifts, your talents, your abilities, your words, you know, what you post on social media, the way that you speak to, you know, the person in the drive through at Wendy's, the way that you go about your daily life. These can all be worship. These can all be our spiritual act of worship to the Lord Jesus Christ. And he desires that you and I just lay it all in his hands, lay it at his feet, and allow him to work and to use us for his glory. This is something that has just been on my heart, and I pray that you've been blessed by it. So have a blessed day, and know that your offering is important. Don't be afraid to do what Christ has called you to do. Um, use that for his glory. Use your days, your life, your gifts, your talents for his glory, and don't dig it in the sand. He has called you to more than you are right now, to more that you're living, to a deeper, you know, more personal, more intimate relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. He called you to that relationship with him and I want to urge you to just step out and to just um, go deeper give him your all and trust him to do a mighty work in you be blessed friends have a wonderful day and um, I'll see you next time bye